नमो तस् भगवते अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् नमो तस् भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् ओके टुडे वी विल आई एम रीडिंग एंड एक्सप्लेनिंग अनुपद सुत्त द मिडिल डिस्कोर्स दैट इज मज्जिमा निकाया 111 1 बाय 1 एज दे अकर्ड now here we are going to see the stages of sariputta how the jhana stages he went through he went through all the jhana stages and those jhana stages have been explained in this sutta first i will tell you about uh, sariputta he was uh, buddha's first and foremost disciple he also came from uh, the country magadha which is now in bihar and in in their youth he and his friend moglana were searching for some spiritual uh, uh, path but they came in front of buddha and within two weeks sariputta became arant so he was declared as the foremost disciple of buddha he was uh, he had given he was been given the permission to ordain other bhikkhus and teach them and give them the objects of meditation and he used to explain very nicely so he was a very wise disciple of buddha that is why he was the most poor uh, uh, the main prime person the right hand of buddha so it is about him how he went through all the jhanas and jhanas when you are entering that time you do not realize after entering after coming out of the jhanas he could explain what all happened in the first jhana in the second in the third and fourth today we are going to only see the jhanas and the first four stages are called the jhanas the next four stages are called the ayatanas so first four stages today we shall go through so this is about sariputta going through all those four jhanas okay now what are jhanas that also i'll explain janas are the stages of understanding see once you go through all the eighth pole noble path eighth pole noble path is right view right thoughts right speech right action right livelihood right efforts right mindfulness and right collectedness so that is the samadhi right mindfulness and right collectedness so in short shil samadhi pragya if your shil the base the foundation is very very firm very strong the shil is very strong then it becomes little easy for us to go into the different stages of samadhi now samadhi in this again in samadhi we have all these jhanas coming up so there are the levels of understanding nothing uh, more about it secondly we should also know that these stages whenever we are going to describe about these stages one should not crave for these stages these stages of jhanas or in sanskrit we call it as dhyana we should never crave for these stages they arise and they pass away as the cause and conditions come for these stages they will arise and in the same way they pass away we are just going to observe how these stages arise so a little bit of explanation about these stages but do not get fascinated do not start craving for these stages while in meditation this you have to remember very well basically jhanas are also we can understand as dimensions of experiences anubhav that is experience so whatever different dimensions of experiences we go through they also call as jhanas even jhanas can be said as levels of cessations it's nothing about constructing jhana remember one thing you cannot construct joy or you cannot construct a jhana it is about levels of cessation the more you let go by doing 6 hours the more things you let go the deeper you go into jhanas so these are levels of cessations so nibbana is the final level of cessation so jhanas are the steps 
though they are higher steps, but they are higher steps of not constructing it. They are the steps of deconstructing. So that is why they are called also levels of cessations. Okay. So once you're by doing this eighth full noble path and you are into samma samadhi, that is right collectedness, your mind is balanced, then you go through all these jhana stages. So it's very important you follow first, understand and follow the eighth noble path. And when you're meditating, automatically these stages will come. You do not have to crave for them. Okay. So now in this sutta, we are going to see how Sariputta went through all the different stages of jhanas, that is levels of understanding. So thus have I heard on one occasion, the blessed one was living at Travati in Jetta's Grove, Anatta Pindika's Park. There he addressed the bhikkhus, the bhikkhus, bhikkhus, venerable sir, they replied. The Blessed One said this, Bhikkhus, Sariputra is wise. Sariputra has great wisdom. Sariputra has wise wisdom. Sariputra has wide wisdom. Sariputra has joyous wisdom. Sariputra has quick wisdom. Sariputra has keen wisdom. Sariputra has penetrative wisdom. During half a month, because Sariputra gained insight into the states one by one as they occurred. Now Sariputra's insight into states one by one as they occurred was this. See, even you can see there are so many types of wisdom. He came to know that Sariputra was great in wisdom and he had quick wisdom. He had keen wisdom. He was also very much investigating person. He used to investigate and not a blind follower. So he used to investigate things. Why this, that. So he took nearly two weeks even after listening to this because he had this uh, uh, about investigating mind. And Sariputra has penetrative wisdom. So this is also how you penetrate. And that is how while penetrating you go into deeper jhana levels. So now he tells about the first jhana, how we enter. Here because quite secluded from sensual pleasures, secluded from unwholesome states, Sariputta entered upon and abided in the first jhana, which is accompanied by applied and sustained thought with rapture, that is joy, and pleasure, born of seclusion. Now in first jhanas, there are five factors of first jhanas. First is, as you quite secluded from sensual pleasures. Now sensual pleasures, they come through six sense doors. The other five sense doors, which we have, that is eyes, your nose, your tongue, taste, your ears, and your skin. So we, all our experiences are through this five, six, uh, six sense doors, you can say. Your mind is also one of the sense doors. So all our pleasures, we come into contact physically, basically, because of five, six sense doors. Five sense doors. That is from eyes, you see some beautiful things. From years, you listen to something very, very nice thing. That is, you enjoy all those pleasures. You uh, listen to songs which you like or words of those people whom you love. While taste or while talking, you need this sense door of your tongue. Then you have this body, the skin. That is also very pleasurable since the nose. It enjoys the perfumes, the fragrance. So our uh, contact with the whole world, the matrix of this world comes through the five sense doors. Now here he has said quite secluded from sensual pleasures. Means it is not that 
uh, he was not able to hear or he was not able to see. He was able to see things or we are in the first jhana, we can listen to things. But we, our, our mind doesn't get involved into those things. He doesn't start enjoying those pleasant senses or he doesn't start craving for those things. He can listen to the sound in first jhana. Everyone can listen or you can see, you can touch or you feel, you can touch the feel. But your mind doesn't get grasped into those things. You do not get involved into those things. That is why it is called as secluded from sensual pleasures. So they are not getting affected by any pleasures. The mind doesn't get affected by any pleasures. So by right view, see there are two mundane pleasures we have and super mundane. So now in mundane, this uh, we know by right view that all the, what is coming in our life is because of past karmas or whatever. And super mundane is we are seeing how the mind gets into the mind gets expansive. The mind is not affected by all these things, small, small things, the sensual pleasures things rather. And why it doesn't get affected? Because we have learned the six hours. It's learning the six, letting go things. So it doesn't get affected. And that is how you start entering into the jhanas. So your bhikkhus, quite secluded from sensual pleasures. Secluded from unwholesome state. Now, in first jhana, these are the five factors. First is secluded from sensual pleasures, which I told that whatever arises or whatever comes as a pleasure for other people, for them, they do not get involved into that. They are not affected. That is why we call secluded. Now, secluded from unwholesome states. What are unwholesome states? All these are hindrances. Unwholesome states are hindrances. What are the hindrances? We have craving, aversion, restlessness, doubt, sloth and torpor. These are the hindrances. So when your mind is not affected by these hindrances, means in the beginning when you sit for meditation, some of the other hindrances will come, your mind is taken away. But as you, as you start doing six hours, six hours, six hours, and your mind gets secluded from sensual pleasures, then it also starts getting secluded from hindrances. For It can be five, ten minutes. I'm not saying the whole time. But for five to ten minutes, then your mind is secluded. It is not affected by any hindrances. It, your meditation is not getting distracted by any hindrances. That is what you call as secluded from any hindrances. Secluded from unwholesome states. Then, when this happens... Then Sariputra enters upon the and abided in the first jhana. After these two things happen, seclusion of sensual pleasures and seclusion of unwholesome state, then Sariputra enters into enters upon and abided in the first jhana. Then there's a joy. When why this joy comes? Because it's a relief. Once you're out of your hindrances. This hindrance don't affect you anymore. You have learned to let go them by doing six hours. You have learned to let go all those hindrances. Then there's a relief. And this relief gives birth to joy. That is called as preeti. It's very nice how you enter into these things. That is why I told you. It's about relief. It is about letting go. It's not about constructing joy. You cannot construct joy. Only by relief you get this joy. Now, some people will think uh, joy is something great. You feel very aesthetic, very light, very uh, great feeling. It can happen or it cannot happen. But there's a relief. And that relief, the joy, everyone can experience. Yes, there's a joy because of the relief of coming out of the hindrances, of not getting affected by sensual pleasures and by hindrances. There is a real relief. And this relief gives birth to joy. That is why this preeti. So when this joy, you start entering. So joy starts coming. And it is a, and this joy, and along with joy, 
joy and sukha is tied it up what is sukha sukha is happiness the comfort of the physical comfort when you are meditating and you, do, you don't feel like fidgeting or itching or your mind is a quiet your body is ekdam relaxed very sitting very comfortably for about 45 to 1 hour you don't even feel like moving and there's a joy in your heart in your mind and this body there is happiness comfort so they both are always tied up so joy and sukha you start feeling in the first jhana itself and they are born of seclusion seclusion of hindrances so this time in the first jhana the joy and sukha they are born of seclusion this you have to remember these factors naturally depend upon correct why these factors come they come because of the causes and conditions your mind has become stable your mind has become mindfulness there's a lot of steadiness in your mind that is why this joy and comfort come with you your mind is very attentive you have taken efforts of doing six hours whenever your mind got distracted you were doing six hours and when you are in loving kindness you are starting taking efforts about all these things these are the right efforts when you take a right effort there's right concentration rather collectedness right attentiveness there so you start feeling this joy so that is why this happiness comes and abide it you start being into the jhanas which is accompanied by applied and sustained thought with rapture and pleasure born of seclusion here the joy and pleasure is born of seclusion which is also accompanied now in first jhana we also have this applied and sustained thought now what is applied and sustained thought applied is the initial thought and sustained is the continuous thought that is called as applied first is initial thought and then we have that is called as examining thought also is we can call as applied thought first is initial thought which is called as vittakka and vichar in pali so this applied thought is in, in the form of hindrances some uh, some hindrances come and you start thinking about that hindrance that's called vittakka and vichar but in jhanas or in loving kindness you bring that thought of loving kindness right in your mind you remember something that gave you this happiness and you start wishing yourself so first that incidents comes in your mind oh with that incidents there is some joy or you think about a baby in your arms and the baby is smiling at you and then you start smiling so this joy you have got that was the vittakka and when you start keep on being with that start revolving yourself around that loving kindness meditation and continuously you are revolving cultivating loving kindness in your heart in your mind that is called as applied thought so the beginning stage is called as vittakka then the vichara means initial accompanied by applied and sustained thought i hope you have got this point because it will come again and again so here verbalization is there in the first jhana there is verbalization may i be happy my may my friend be happy may she be satisfied contented i wish myself happiness i wish others happiness so this verbalization is there in this first jhanas okay is also unification of the mind the mind is collected ekagata is there unification the mind is balanced and you can sustain with this priti and joy is there in your heart now in first jhana what ceases because i told you in every jhanas some or the other thing gets ceased in the first jhanas the hindrances are ceased that is why you can sustain yourself into the first jhana the hindrances otherwise keep on disturbing us and we cannot go deeper into the dimensions of our experiences 
So in first jhana, the hindrances are ceased. That is why you can feel this preeti and that is why you can feel the happiness, comfort in your body and mind. And the mind is extremely balanced. And But you have this verbalization. Your mind is more and more with the loving kindness feeling. So in the first jhanas, hindrances are seized. And the stage in the first jhana. Now I will explain what are the stages which are given over here by in the suttas. And the states in the first jhanas, the applied thought, as I told you, the initial thought, the sustained thought, the joy, the pleasure, and the unification of mind, the contact, feeling, perception, volition, and mind, the zeal, the decision, the energy, the mindfulness, equanimity, and attention. These stages, states, were defined by him one by one as they occurred. Known to him, those stages arose. Known they were present. Known they disappeared. So in all this, see, he was not taking anything personal. So all these stages he experienced, but he did not take personally. And he came to know they all aroused and they all passed away. So arising and passing is you should be very much. And he did not get attached to those stages, those feelings, those experiences, because he was quite observant. And he saw them arising and also passing away. This is very important. We should not get attached or we should not start craving. I want this. Again, then you have started going to the wrong direction. So in the first jhanas, he knew there was an applied thought. There was a sustained thought. There was a joy, there was pleasure in the body, the mind was unification of mind was there, there was contact, some sound must have come, there was contact, he could feel the sensation, there was a perception that this is so and so sound, and the volition, what was the volition of letting go? And the mind, he knew, my attention should be with the loving kindness. The zeal, there was a zeal, there was a decision, that I will be with the loving kindness. There was an energy also. We need this energy. The efforts. There was mindfulness. Equanimity had started. There was equanimity. And attention. Most important is attention towards the object of meditation. These stages were defined one by one as they occurred. And they aroused, present. Now they disappeared. He understood thus. So indeed, these states not having been come into being. First, they, was not, they were not into being. It is so anitya. They were not present. Then come into being. Having been, they vanished. So, so much of impermanency is seen. See, there is again this right view and this. these are the insights. These are the insights. See how they arouse and they pass. And this is all experiential insights. They are not just someone has told. Now when we are, I am telling you, if you have experienced, it's a thing. But this is all about uh, Sutta Maya Pratya. That is, you are just listening. But experiential truth of impermanence, that is the real insight and that is the true knowledge. So he understood. Having been, they vanished. Regarding those states, he abided unattracted. So regarding those stages, he came to know as they arouse, they pass away. So why get attracted towards them? So he was unattracted. That also he was very mindful. And he knew that he was unattracted towards that. Unrepelled. As they came, he was not excited. As they went, he was not did not feel dukkha about it. Independent. He is independent from that experience itself. Detached, free, disassociated with a mind rid of barriers. So there was no barrier. Oh, such a beautiful stage came in my this and it all passed away. If you if you are equanimous, how will you come to know whether you are craving for those stages? If you feel very sorry when those stages go away, then that means you are craving. 
the mind of Darius. He understood there is an escape beyond. He knew that there is something beyond this also. And with the cultivation of that attainment, he confirmed that there is. After this attainment of first jhana, he came to know that there is more stages to come. So again, because with the stilling of applied and sustained thought, Sariputra entered and abided in the second jhana. Now in the second jhanas, there is no need. The applied and sustained thoughts, no need. So in the beginning, you need all these things. Now the sustained thought, so the verbalization is gone. You are continuously with the loving kindness feeling. You are absorbed into that. You feel, you have just, I may not absorbed, I will, uh, that is the wrong word you say. You are as a satellite, how it goes around the earth. It doesn't get too close, it doesn't get too far. So the satellite is moving around the earth continuously. In that fashion, if your mind is continuously now with your loving kindness feeling, it doesn't wander away. If it wanders, do six hours and again bring back. But now it starts remaining for a longer time. In that fashion, you can say the mind was more collected, more balanced. With the stilling of applied. Now, in the second jhana, what ceases? Is this vittaka and vichar that gets seen? Now there is no need for vittaka and vichar. You are already into that. So, like when once you start a car, once you just give the starter to the car, that is initial, and then the sustained the car keeps in. Now there is no need again and again when the car is going on again and again. You do not keep on um, switching with the keys. You do not play with the keys anymore because the car is still moving continuously. That is called as, there is no need for initial and applied thought. So in the second jhana, this ceases. The verbalization ceases. That may I be happy or may my friend be happy. No need. You are just you are with that loving kind. It is enough cultivated now. By that. Now because of this, now you have this warm feeling and you are with that feeling continuously. Your self-confidence increases. So, in this second, again, Bhikkhu, the stilling of applied and sustained thought, Sariputra entered and abided in the second jhana, which has self confidence and singleness of mind. Without applied and sustained thought, with rapture and pleasure, born of collectedness. Now, the joy, the joy is there. But it is not because of uh, seclusion from hindrances. It is now because of, it's born because of collected. Your mind has become more collected. So because of self-confidence, now this joy, preeti is there and it is tied up with happiness. There's a comfort also in the body. There's happiness and joy. Both are there. But they are born because of mind is more balanced, more collected. And the cessation of applied and initial thought is there. And the states in the second jhanas, the self-confidence, the rapture, the pleasure, and the unification of the mind, the contact, feeling, perception, volition, and mind, the zeal, decision, energy, mindfulness, equanimity, and attention. These stages were defined by him one by one as they occurred. Known to him those states arouse, known they were present, known they disappeared. He understood thus. And with the cultivation of that attainment, he confirmed that there is. See, in the second jhanas, what happened? The cessation is there. Of this, now you now even this verbalization is of stressful thing. You don't need your mind is very relaxed, very comfortable with the feeling of loving kindness. So self-confidence is there. So now as if you're into autopilot, you are just just little bit of navigation and you are done. 
is automatically going on. So you are very comfortable with the second jhanas. Now there is joy and happiness born out of collectedness, as I told you. Again, Bhikkhus, with the fading away, as well of joy, Sariputra abided in equanimity and mindful and fully aware, still feeling pleasure with the body, he entered upon and abided in the third jhana, on account of which noble ones announce he has pleasant abiding, who has equanimity and is mindful. Now what happens in third jhanas? See, in all these jhanas, it is not that, that there is no outside world. Everyone, those who are in the third jhana also, they can listen. They, any sound comes, they are able to listen. If there's ant going on, on their walking on their body part, they can feel the ant moving. They can smell. They can taste. Everything is there. But their attention is not there. They do not get involved into that. They do not get distracted by those things because all, all these five sense contacts of everything is there. This is the difference between the stream and other uh, what you call as concentration meditation. In concentration meditation, what happens is you get fully absorbed into that object of meditation and these all these things are closed. But in the stream, Whenever you are going to jhanas, your mind is very collected. You are fully aware of what's going on surrounding you, but you do not get affected. That is why it is very easy to practice into daily life. When once you start doing twim, and as Bhante Vimaramsi has told us about six hours, so we are able to do it so nicely. So we can carry this meditation, and the real habit uh, changes over here because every time you are able to. Recognize your defilements and do six hours. The outside world is there in third jhanas also. And now the loving kindness becomes a little softer. It changes more into compassion. Now you feel that feeling of loving kindness has become softer or it has a little bit diffused. You cannot feel that energy of loving kindness here and there and this happening, that happening. It is diffused. There's, you might feel that there is no loving kindness, there is no feeling at all. But if you are mindful, you come to know that it has become soft, it has diffused. So it has gone more towards compassion. Now, the joy. Here what happens is the preeti ceases, the joy ceases. Now, as, we told, as I told you, the joy is there in the beginning. First two jhanas, the joy is there. But it ceases, it changes. You should not feel bad about it. But there is body happiness is there. And you are so equanimous. Your equanimity has increased. So you are not excited about that joy. You do not want that joy. Now you are just equanimous. And you are observing whatever is happening. These are the experiences you know by now. They arise and they pass away. So there is no more excitement. There is no more joy. So in by third jhana, the uh, joy ceases. You are just comfortable. This, so again, because with the fading away, as well as of, of joy, fading away, as well of joy, Sari Putra abided in equanimity. Now here the equanimity has started. And mindful and fully aware, Still feeling pleasure with the body. So there is happiness in the body. Your body is very comfortable. But the joy has disappeared. He entered upon and abided in the third jhana. On account of which noble one announces. He has pleasant abiding. Who has equanimity and is mind. Now from the third jhana. The equanimity starts getting strong. You're equanimous. So whatever is arising. You are equanimous. So you are not craving for that relief that hindrances are there or not there. They are already gone. And you are just equanimous towards the experiences that are coming up. And the states in the third jhana, the equanimity, the pleasure, the mindfulness, the full awareness and the unification of mind, the contact, feeling, perception, volition and mind, the zeal, the decision, 
energy, mindfulness, equanimity, and attention. These states were defined by him one by one as they occurred. Known to him, those states arouse. Known they were present. Known they disappeared. Main thing is, again he's telling, so what, what all went? Here, third in jhana, the preeti went. But rest, the mindfulness was there, energy was there. And he also knew that these stages arise and they all disappeared. They vanish. So the, again, he's seeing that this is all anitya, the impermanence. That is why, ta why take it personally. These stages, they arise because of some cause and condition. Cause and condition, as I told you, right mindfulness, right attentiveness, balance of mind is there. So these stages, they come automatically. And they also pass away. Thus, he understood He understood thus. And with the cultivation of that attainment, he confirmed that there is this third stage is there. Now we'll go to the fourth stage. Again, because with the abandoning of joy and pain and with the previous disappearance of joy and grief, Sari Putra entered and abided in the fourth jhana, which had neither pain nor pleasure and purity of mindfulness due to equanimity. Now in the fourth, what happens? The joy has already gone in. Third, the abandoning of joy. So the joy is not there. And also the pain. Now the equanimity is of such a high level. So the pain is also no more a pain for them. It's just a sensation. And the sensation also passed through. It doesn't. There is now no valuation about the pain or pleasure. So it's, even if the pleasant sensations come, they just pass through. Even if the painful sensations come, they just pass through. So the mind has become so equanimous that anything that arises in the mind or in the body Whatever stages come, they are, he is equanimous. That is, there is no reaction. That is called as equanimity. The mind has become very crystal clear. It has become very calm. It is very clear. And you know, Buddha has also said the mind is luminous. Actually, our original mind is very luminous. Only because of defilements. It has become like there are shades different shades come only because of defilement. Otherwise, our mind is luminous. So in this stage, by the four jhanas, you see your mind is very clear. Clear out of, come out of defilements. You are able to observe or you're not able to even, even if anything thought arises. Now thoughts will, is a part of mind. So they keep arising, but they do not affect you anymore. You are just observing, oh, these thoughts have arisen, they're passed away. You are very equanimous. And in this stage, the mind becomes very balanced. And you start feeling uh, the dimensions. You start going to more deeper dimensions of your mind. And here the stages come that we start seeing those three things. That Dukkha, Anitta and Anatma. So Dukkha. See, you see that no stages are permanent. Then you also see that uh, everything is so impermanent. And then you come to know, where am I? I'm not there anymore. So there is no self. That stage just starts coming into these things. And the states in the fourth jhana, the equanimity, the neither painful or nor pleasant feelings, the mental con con unconcern due to tranquility, See, again, I'll read this. And the states in the four jhanas are, there is equanimity, the neither painful nor pleasant feeling, the mental unconcern due to tranquility. Now, the feelings are painful or not the pain. For them, the, there are no pain only. They're just feelings. Neither pleasurable, neither painful. Because the mental unconcern is there. They're not concerned about those feelings because of tranquility. There is tranquility or equanimity. The purity of mindfulness and the unification of mind, the contact, the feeling, the perception, volition and mind, 
the zeal, the enthusiasm, the zeal, the decision, energy, mindfulness, equanimity, and attention. These states were defined by him one by one as they occurred. Known to him those states arouse, known they were present, known they disappeared. He understood thus and with the cultivation of that attainment he confirmed that there is. So these are the four jhanas I would I have tried to explain. It is about uh, it is about this Anupata Sutta, one by one. So the next four stages, that is Ayatanas, that I will complete it. The half portion of the suttas I will complete it on Sunday. So these were the four uh, jhanas that they, they are the levels of understanding, which I've tried to explain as much as possible. <laughs> so any questions? In short, I will say there is the worldly thing, nothing, wandering mind. In the you know, in the beginning when we start meditating, this you are not able to stay with the object of meditation. Only five to two minutes you can feel the loving kindness. But in first jhana, there's joy, there's excitement, happiness, and tranquility. And only wholesome observation thoughts come. Your mind can stay to by three to five minutes in loving kindness and you can be able to sit for 30 to 45 minutes without moving in second jhana all these states the joy excitement happiness tranquility are little in bigger stage there is more subtle joy to stop verbalizing in second jhana because it causes tension you are able to be in the time of object is three to six minutes you are able to be in the loving kindness without your mind getting distracted completely. The thoughts will be there, but they're at the background. In the third jhana, joy turns into tranquility, contentment, there is happiness. You feel like you're floating or you're very much grounded. Anything can happen to your body because now you have started, your mind is getting away from the body. So you're, you feel very light sometimes. You start losing body feelings, that, that is, you start feeling that you are not having feet or hands are missing types. By three to ten minutes, you can stay with the object of meditation. You, can, you are able to sit for 60 minutes. This is good. By four jhanas, equanimity is there. Happy feelings, they fade away. You are more equanimous. Just balance is there. The mind is very balanced. You are not excited or not joy or nothing happens. Feeling of loving kindness arises from the head. Now in the fourth jhana, start feeling your loving kindness from the head. You can stay with the object of meditation from 5 to 10 minutes. You start sitting for 60 minutes at least. So in the Sunday talk, we will cover the next Arupa jhanas or Arupa states. They are called as Salaitanas. Uh, sorry, they are not called as Ayatanas, they are called as Ayatanas. That will be complete coming Sunday. So, any questions from your side? Okay, and let's share merits. And share the merits. May suffering once be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find it. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power, share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Sarah. Sound.